Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope everybody's doing okay. <coughs> slight, slight congestion, but I should be able to get through this. No problem at all. Waiting for the live thing to pop up to make sure. No problem at all. Waiting for myself. And yes, it works. This one is an interesting story. Getting back to what we normally do here is just look at numbers, crunch numbers like crazy. And every we've been talking about miners and the capitulation, the lack of profitability with the price of Bitcoin being so low for quite some time now. Now we're going to dig into that and what it all means and what happens historically when miners capitulate because we just got a capitulation signal today. And we'll dig into that and we'll look at 13 years of history and see what it means. And as usual, it's edutainment. And again, we're going to look at a cool new indicator. I'm going to be grateful for the inspiration I got from Sanjay to put this together. And let's talk about the elephant in the room or the hero of the day, Charles Edwards. He tweeted, there it is, hash ribbon minor capitulation confirmed, triggered by the $10 billion FTX fraud and subsequent collapse. Bitcoin miners are now going bust and hash rate is going down. In fact, the hash rate is going down fast. It fell before it's scheduled to fall another 9% or so during the next tweak of the actual chain. But let's dig into what this means in great detail. We'll also talk about minor profitability as well. So first of all, I did cover this a few days ago, that miners are selling at the fastest rate in seven years. This is insane. It's a Bitcoin miner bloodbath and uh, the most aggressive miner selling, again, over that large period of history. And it's up over 400% in three weeks, which is staggering. So they are desperate just to keep breathing, just to stay afloat. Another view of the minor capitulation, this is Charles Edwards' image. He tweeted today from Caprioli Investments Limited, and you can see the death cross is confirmed. I'll talk more about the death cross and significance, but there are a few interesting nuances with this one. But when we look back at history, you have a little gray button, that's the minor capitulation indicator, boom, and it's followed by a buy button. And what I did was I analyzed the history of all of these signals from this indicator of hash ribbons from Capriole. And the result is astounding. And I normally don't get very excited about these types of things, but we'll see. So first of all, this is the hash ribbon from Glassnode from the beginning of time back to 2009. And you can see how it develops. This is the green line compared to the Bitcoin price. And you can see very clearly the, the age old debate is, you know, hash ribbon. What type of market indicator is it? It assumes that Bitcoin tends to reach a bottom when miners capitulate. Now, when Bitcoin becomes too expensive to mine relative to the cost of mining, I'll dig into that in a second too, the hash ribbon indicates that the worst of the miner capitulation is over. When the 30-day moving average of the hash rate crosses above the 60-day moving average, the switch from light red to dark red areas. And when this occurs, the price momentum switches as well from negative to positive, and we have a good buying opportunity. But what's, uh, the hash ribbon was of course created by Charles Edwards, but what, why is this so important to look at? So if we look and zoom in right now, we will see exactly what's happening over the last couple of months. You can see we have that crossover from the short term to long term when the green crosses through the blue. The green is the 30 day moving average and the blue is the 60 day and we just hit that. And typically, in traditional markets, that's called a death cross. We'll talk more about that too in a second. But how are miners getting squeezed? Well, it's very simple. Hash rate is going through the roof and price is going down and they simply cannot afford to mine at this level. So I decided to take a little detour from this presentation before we get back to the numbers and the analysis of history. But let's look at what the type of pain that the miners are feeling today. So this is the state of the art miner. It's called an S19 Pro. The average residential electricity rate in the United States is today 15.95 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, I don't know what it is in all different parts of the world at this stage. There are some places probably they can get electricity for free if they can find a way to tap into a natural resource or use stranded energy. But this is the average residential rate. Now, using a state-of-the-art miner, the S19 Pro, you will see here from this little chart that I assembled with some numbers, you would be losing $5.65 a day running your miner. 
And the annualized loss per miner is $2,063. And that is staggering. And that makes it basically impossible for people at home to mine Bitcoin. Simply not possible unless they get very, very lucky. Now, if we look at the commercial electricity rates on average for the US, it is 12.95 cents per kilowatt hour. And the mining rig would be losing $3.53 a day or about $1,287 a year. Again, crushingly unprofitable. Now, forget the old rigs. If you have an S9 from way back when, you're losing thousands of dollars. It's just burning electricity. It's just way too competitive. And that's the beauty of how the Bitcoin mining works. Now, if we look at the break-even point for an S19 Pro right now, I calculate it as you need to have electricity that is cheaper than $7.97 a kilowatt hour. And that will mean you will break even with an annualized profit or a loss of $1. But at least you're not losing, you know, bleeding money like crazy. So, you know, I always said, if you can get electricity three to five cents per kilowatt hour, you can make a lot of money. And that's what you need with uh, these types of miners and the state of the art. So the conclusion from just this piece, and we'll go back to the real numbers in a second, is old miners are being shut off and they are burning cash. And the bogey target is having an S19 Pro and under seven cents a kilowatt of electricity. If you have these two as a mining operation, an industrial mining operation, you can make it. You can make a profit. Otherwise, you are getting smashed right now. Now, that doesn't even take into account the cost of the rigs in the first place, but that's a separate issue. Now, let's get back to Capriole hash ribbons. And we're going to look at some history. We're going to crunch some data and we're going to calculate some numbers and a very exciting conclusion. So hang in there, everybody. So when you look at the Capriole hash ribbons, you can pull them up on TradingView. You will see all the indicators. And this is the chart going back to the beginning of time. This is about 13 events where you've got a capitul minor capitulation and a buy signal. And what I did was I analyzed all of the capitulation signals. I, I analyzed all of the buys. I analyzed the duration between the capitulation signal and the buys and the duration between both the average Bitcoin return for that time frame and the direction of Bitcoin after the buy signal. And the results are outstanding. So let's talk about death course and what it means, first of all, if we can rely on it. And it is a pattern used in TA. Again, as I mentioned, moving averages cross each other. The short term crosses through the long term moving average. And the golden cross is the opposite. Golden cross is typically seen as bullish. Death cross is typically seen as bearish. Now, in the stock markets, does it work? Typically in the stock market, you use a 50-day moving average for the short, the 200-day moving average for the long, and it's proven to be a reliable indicator some of the time. Of the last five severe bear markets since 1929, it predicted two of them. It didn't predict three of them, and it did not work in crashes the late 60s, early 70s, Black Monday 1987, and the dot-com crash. So from that perspective, people believe in it, but sometimes it doesn't work. Now, death cross and stock to flow. This is another interesting one. It's very rare. In fact, up until recently, I never saw a situation where you had a death cross happen under the stock to flow. But typically, Bitcoin price doesn't hang around much under the stock to flow anyway. But that is interesting adjunct piece of perspective. Now, getting back to death crosses and why that's important, because if death crosses are only reliable, some of the time in Bitcoin, half of the time in equity markets, could it work here? And that's the analysis that we want to get into. So it does work half the time based on history. It has many false and untimely signals for Bitcoin history. It is, it was, we had one already this year, um, but it is typically the math for an 80 vol asset. Things go up real fast. They're going to come down real fast. Everything mean reverts, as I always say, and especially when RSI is oversold. And that is kind of that. But let's get back to this one. This is fantastic. So what I did was first, I took the Capriole model and I changed it from 30 day and 60 day to 50 day and 200 day, and it doesn't work at all. So that was invalidated because I know many people think, let's try the traditional way and see if it does work. Now let's let crunch up the numbers and show you the results that I found. Now, <clears throat> This is a little chart that shows you. Let me walk you through what I did. Going back to 2nd of January 2012, when I got the first capitulation signal and the buy signal, this is the actual gain or loss made between those two signals. Remember the gray dot? Let me take you back to what we're talking about here. 
So on the chart, you have the gray dot first, the capitulation, and then it's followed up by the blue, the buy. And that is what I measured and analyzed for all of these timeframes. So let's jump back to this chart here. You will see 2nd of January, 2012. The, we won't see the duration on this chart, uh, but I have it on another chart. But the loss was about 18%. The next time it happened, the gain just in that time frame between the minor capitulation signal and the buy signal was up. Third time, up. Fourth time, flat. Fifth time, up a tiny bit. Sixth time, down. And then 7th of January, 2019, it completely tanked. The worst time ever that we had a minor capitulation signal and then the Bitcoin price tanking nearly 50%. So what happened back then? I had to go back in history and refresh my mind. And that's when there was a whole bunch of concerns. And this is kind of uncanny when you talk about this history and you go back and we always say history repeats or it doesn't always repeat, but it rhymes, whatever you want to take of that. But here there was a Bitcoin investor called Trace Meyer. They called for a proof of keys event on the 3rd of January. And that rattled the whole Bitcoin market and users were prompted to withdraw their Bitcoins from exchanges to test for full or fractional reserves. Um, hit Bitcoin froze certain clients' withdrawals ahead of the event. Other companies uh, on the proofofkeys.com sites, such as Bitfinex, Poloniex, Purse.io, Robinhood, Coinbase, also blocked withdrawals or otherwise experienced issues during the stress test. This prompts a question regarding their ultimate solvency. Again, this happened between January 5th, January 7th, and it caused huge turmoil in the markets. Sound familiar, anybody? Yeah, well, that stuff's happened again. Now we know when people pause withdrawals, it's a sign of death. Um, and just <laughs> make sure you don't hold your stuff on the exchanges and make sure you get out on time. I don't want to whip a dead horse. Now, getting back to this chart, that was 2019. Then we had a little dip uh, in December 2019. And then gain, gain, gain. Next four are big gainers just in that small window of time, which I'll tell you what that is in a few minutes. And, uh, and here we are. Then in August 2020, we had a dip between. So that is kind of what's going on. Now, let's look and see if there's any correlation between the duration of the dip between the minor capitulation and the price change. And the answer is sadly, no, no correlation. At least I couldn't find any as we go forward. But you can see here over time, the typical average duration goes from you know, a very low amount of about seven days, all the way up to 125 days. And you can see the relative performances of the assets during those times. And also the fact that the majority of the dots are a positive change, which is good. So let's look now at what happens between these two frame, time frames again, the minor capitulation time it starts and the actual buy signal. And the median price change is 3%, median, not average. The average price change is 11.7% which is very, very impressive. And the average duration from the minor capitulation to the buy signal, 48 days, uh, which you can see should be pretty clear from this little chart here. Now, this is probably the most important slide next. So of the 13 instances that I looked at, only once did Bitcoin go down after the buy signal. Now remember, we're at the capitulation signal now, we're not at the buy signal yet. Now, during this time, after the buy signal, Bitcoin's gone up four times. It's rampaged eight times. And what I mean by rampage is it's gone 50% or more in a very short window of time up after the buy signal. And only once has it gone down during this whole history. And that happened to be most recently as well during summer of 2022. But when you're hit by black swans, everything is different. Everything is a little bit unusual. So final conclusion. Just to put all this in perspective, not slinging hopium, uh, just sharing what the numbers and history tells us. The average return from minor capitulation signal to the buy signal is plus 11.7%. Remember, today we had that minor capitulation signal. Okay, so the clock is technically running for the next 48 days. And if the average duration repeats, that'll take us to Sunday, January 15th, 2023. And what happens after that January 15th time? So again, make sure everybody gets this. History has shown the majority of the time, 92% of the time, from the capitulation signal to the average duration, Bitcoin price goes up nearly 12%. After that is what's interesting, 92% of the time, 
It goes up after the buy signal. Only 8% of the time does it go down. And 62% of the, all those 13 instances, Bitcoin goes on a rampage. I mean, so this is all very positive. The multi-million dollar question is, is this time different? Or will it just end the same? And a big thank you again to Charles Edwards for his model, which I found very fascinating. So let me know below if you think, oh no, we're going to whatever, 3,500 or 12,000. Or if we really are at a capitulation level, because if we are not, if, 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 the, if we go down further from here, that would invalidate this model and history. So we'll see where it happens. Uh, with that, thank you everybody. Hope you enjoy the show. Thank you to the moderators in the chat and everybody out there in the cryptoverse. Java, TND, Tesla, K8, everybody. Appreciate you all. Thanks. Have a good night.